Hey guys. Uh -oh. Welcome to Sex the Story Behind the Pleasure. I'm in I'm in my no well, I'm back to what I tried to do it last week and didn't work out, but it's working out today. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Um, I'm Shamel Jackson, the owner of Breaking It Down with C. Jackson and author of Wait. And this is Sex, the Story Behind the Pleasure. I'm here every Tuesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, giving you, um, giving you discussions and information on different sexual topics. And this is your first time. Feel free to say hey if you want to comment. If you're not too shy, um, say hey or even leave a comment as well and tell me if you're new, how did you find about found out about this broadcast. But... Breaking it down with C. Jackson is where I help teens um, make an informed decision about sex through the story or others. But also, um, sometimes a lot of young adults are, um, it appeals to or attracts to a lot of young adults this message. And so um, that's all good as well. But um, if you have been following me, you know that I always go by this quote by Fedris Douglas it's better to build strong children than to repair a broken men. So um, you are very important to me. And so um, that's my first, 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 first um, passion is helping the youth. Um, and also I'm a teacher. So, I mean, in the daytime, I'm helping youth and then I'm here at night as well. Or oh, after my uh, day job, I'm helping youth as well. So that's my passion. That's my purpose, um, starting with the youth. And who knows where it can go from there. But welcome, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I'm, I'm slowly getting to this Snapchat, y'all. I did two snaps. I did two snaps, I think, last week. It was last week. It wasn't this week, because today's just Tuesday. So I did two snaps, y'all. I'm proud of myself. Two snaps on my, hey, Ryan. Two snaps on my um, Breaking It Down C Snapchat. So I be I kind of mess uh, try to practice on my regular Snapchat, but I actually did two posts on there. So one day I'm gonna be a pro at it, like some some other people. But um, tonight you see the title of this broadcast is "How I Wait." And so um, if you want to share this broadcast, go ahead and share it with your followers. But that's the topic for tonight because um, last broadcast somebody made a comment on. Um, how do I wait? Like, what's my journey like? How do I wait? And two, I'm doing an event on July 22nd here in Memphis, Tennessee called Queens and Waiting. That's why you see the hashtag Queens and Waiting 2017. And so um, it's kind of, you know, for it's going to be a panel for teens 13 to 17 so they can get an idea of like, okay, they told me to wait, but how do I do that? Like, what does that look like? And so you need, I want them to see like the full picture from different people because my weight is probably different than somebody else's weight, which it is. And so um, that's where you get the stories from. So you can hear all these stories. So if you're in the Memphis area, or if you're not in Memphis area, you want to come register at Teen Girl 13 to 17, that's July 22nd, 1 to 3 at Jason's Deli. All the information is on the Facebook page, it's on the Instagram page. Um, you can find it on Eventbrite. It is $5, but the first five uh, people who register get a free copy of my book, Wait, Women in Intimate Tales. And uh, I do want to talk about, y'all, I got it on my notes here at the end, but I'm going to talk about this now since I'm talking about the event. I got a third, well, I got a third sponsor today, but the second sponsor I got last Friday, um, I'm so excited about what she sponsored. And I'm going to post what that uh, item is going to be for the swag bags that every girl is going to get at the event. So be on the lookout for what I post about that um, special gift that's going to be, well, one of the gifts that's going to be in the swag bag on um, July 22nd. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I want to tell y'all now, but I'm going to wait. So I'm like, hence the third wait um, on my shirt. But yeah, it also, um, so that's that. Got a third sponsor. There's still time if you want to sponsor a team, if you want to sponsor your product or I, product or service, um, well, you can do that. Um, it's $25. Um, shoot, me a, uh, shoot me your email, and I can send you that information. So that sponsorship. If you want to, if you don't, if you want to sponsor a team, that's fine too. Just uh, again, send me an email, comment, something like that. We can work that out. But y'all, yesterday, um, 
I've been trying to find a place to do the broadcast, and it's so fun. I went to like three places yesterday, and I'm just like, that is, I haven't found the one place, like the one place that fits what I'm trying um, to do. So, but luckily, the library here <laughs> is available every time it's time to uh, do my broadcast. And so, if not, y'all know y'all will see me in the car doing this thing. And so, I've, that's what I was doing yesterday. Uh, looking for spaces, going to community centers, and I just learned a lot just by sharing this information about the event with community centers. So, you know, all of this is a journey. This, this sales we walk is a journey. This um, business is a journey. That book was a journey. Like, everything is a journey. I'm just learning, trying not to get caught up in what I did wrong, but try to say, okay, this is what I should do the next time. And um, thank you for coming in. Uh, please, please say hey if you want to. Some people just like to like sneak in. But that's cool too because sometimes I go other people broadcasts and I just like want to listen and see what's going on if I never, especially if I never um, listened to them before. Okay, but anyway, that's all the news, uh, well, some of the news anyway that I wanted to talk about um, and I'll get to some other things when this broadcast is over. But as I said, last uh, week somebody mentioned, how do you wait? Like, well, she didn't ask it in that way, but that was really the, the question, how do you wait? And so, and I said, you know, my journey with celibacy has changed uh, over the years. And so, you know, I really started, I didn't start dating until I was 17. So that's really why I started, that's why I backtracked my whole celibacy walk. Because prior to that, I mean, I wouldn't really... I wasn't into it. so into dating and all that. I was just school, all the work. That's it. And so um, I'm going to um, go from there. When I first, when I got my first boyfriend, because it was easy. Obviously, if I don't have a boyfriend, said I'm saying really that hard. <laughs> if you ain't get dating nobody, like that's 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 not hard. So it's not as hard as if you do have a significant other. So 17, I got my first boyfriend. So this is what, like almost 15 years ago. Um, and so my walk has changed so much. Let me tell you what, it's, it was my walk at 17 and my walk now is different because of two things. For one, the type of person I dated. And then two, the knowledge that I have gotten over the years has increased. And so um, that's kind of it because I can't put all the blame on the person that day. I mean, nobody put a gun to my head to tell me to date this one person or this one person, I chose that. And so, um, but I was just saying, that's, there's going to stop. Should I say that you need to be careful about who you choose today because it, it can affect um, your actions, whether or not you plan to do it or not, because, you know, birds of a feather flock together. So it's kind of like that whole thing. And I talk about that. And uh, I remember I talked about soul ties last year and I talked about bad company corrupts good ter character. And so it's so... True, and we'll get to soul ties later on um, next month, actually. But anyway, so my journey. Let's talk about how it went from 17 up until now. Um, 17, first boyfriend. I was, you know, I was just all over the place. Like, I didn't ever had a boyfriend. I'm just, you know, out there. Not out there, like, having sex out there. But I'm just, you know, the foreplay, putting myself in a situation where I can be tempted to have sex I mean just all of that was awful <laughs> like trying to do doing that was awful is what I'm saying now of course while the stuff is going on I'm not thinking this is awful no I'm not but looking back okay I can't do x of uh, those things in my one two three what all those things put myself in a position so I can't have sex so I'm just being in certain areas at a certain time um, doing certain things. That's what I talk about the foreplay. So all of that was going on with the first when I'm 17, 18. And so get to the second boyfriend. He was a little, you know, more reserved. <laughs> that's my that's, that's the nice way of putting it. Uh, reserved, which is good because I didn't want to do the things that I did with the first boyfriend. Um, and if you got the book or if you heard, listen to other broadcasts, you know that I did participate in oral sex. And I didn't want to go back to that. Like, I didn't want to do that. I want to start a whole new fresh uh, role and so, you know, and just start over. So it was a little less stuff going on sexually, sensually from the first boyfriend now to the second boyfriend. Okay, so then you have um, 
So some of the things I stopped doing, okay, not as much foreplay. Obviously, we were doing another sex or whatever. And so, um, not much foreplay. A born place is that, um could lead us to do things we, I didn't need to do. And two, he kind of, his beliefs was t totally different from the first boyfriend, so that played a part as well. So, you know, um, I talk a lot about that more in detail in the book, but that's just the, the uh, piece of it, you know, just a short version of it, how that went. And then, now, after the second boyfriend, I kind of took like a, a um, man fast. And so I was, I don't know, I just used, I using this term not too long ago, but that's really what it was. I told God, I didn't want him to bring anybody into my life if they were not serious. Like I was just like done. I know I just had two boyfriends and I was done, but of course you like people throughout those times. I did like some guys and all that type of stuff, but two serious, um, boyfriends, I was just done. Like whatever don't bring nobody in my life and I don't even remember anybody even trying to talk to me during this time that I'm talking about now it's five years that I didn't date anybody well like probably five and a half actually five and a half I didn't date not one person and so probably thinking like what was she doing those five years I don't think I even talked to my phone I don't I don't remember none of that like absolutely nothing I, I know I didn't go on any date so and I just don't remember I think I did talk oh no wait I did talk to somebody on the phone see I didn't even remember uh, but it no date so whatever so five years five and a half years let me tell y'all those years were incredible let me see they were great they were awesome that was some those those were some of the best years of my life so far. So far. And so, well, I won't say well, so far. Some other things are going on now great, too. But I'm just saying that those five years were awesome. Let me tell you why. Because I went back to school. Um, I found my purpose. I got. It, I started getting involved in um, ministry at my church. Um, doing volunteering. Then I, I, I got in leadership. And so I, just being in school, working full time, and being in, in the ministry at my church kept me busy. So I didn't have time to think about even thinking about trying to have sex or think about trying to date somebody anyway. I was just so, in the five years went by so fast, y'all. I'm like, where did the time go? But honestly, I enjoyed those five and a half years or whatever. It wasn't six years, so it was like five and a half. I mean, I was just busy doing, not busy doing just anything, but like I was productive and I was having a great time. I had an awesome time doing those five years. So this is for men or women, girls, boys. Do you think that your life is terrible if you don't have anybody? No, it is not. <laughs> no, it is not. What you need to find you something to do. Get a hobby. Make some friends. So I go, okay, I hung out with friends. I did all of that stuff. So the five years, man fast, did me some good. It was awesome. And so now, third boyfriend, who is also my current boyfriend, um, is he came back into the picture. Well, he came in the picture in those five years, but I wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. Like, neither one was ready, but there was like a, he, it was like a tease. <laughs> Like, okay, this is who you're going to hook up with in a couple of years, but I just need to drop this in your in your spirit, in your mind. So when you do, when you are ready, it won't be such a shock to you. And that's really what happened. So 2011, met the, the current boyfriend, I met him um, 2011, officially met him in 2011, and then... 2014 is when we started dating. So y'all, from two, from 2009 to two, late 2009 to summer 2014, nobody dating. Nobody was yeah. 2009. So like five, almost five years. I said I don't even know. It was now five years. And so um, it was. I mean, it was like when when it was time. I was like okay. I still was, I still was like, whatever, you know, because I was like, God, don't send me nobody that ain't talking about nothing, like, I don't even care. And so, um, but that's what I did in the five years. And so, we got to get to the current boyfriend, 
Um, it's totally different from the first two. For one, his beliefs are the same as mine, so we both want to wait till we're married to have sex. And two, he's a virgin. Um, three, he knows what we got to do so we don't have sex until marriage. So it's totally different from the first two boyfriends. And so that's another thing that has changed um, my celibacy journey. You know, the people that I hang with, the things that I learned. I learned so much in those five years about sex, the way God views it. It just changed my whole thing. So now it's like no kissing. And that's really from, you know, he said that he didn't want to do that. And I was like, that's crazy. Then I looked it up. I read more information about it. So I was like, okay, that's cool. And that's like awesome because let's not even go there. So that goes back to, you know, not putting yourself in a situation where you are going to be tempted. And so I don't have no problem with that. Is it hard? Yes, it is. Doing those as I said, first, second, because it's the third boyfriend. It was, it's hard. It was. It's hard. It was hard at each each season. First boyfriend, it was hard to abstain. Second boyfriend, it was hard to abstain. Third boyfriend, it's harder. It was hard. Or it is hard. So it's just easier. For one, we're not in the same state. Um, two, we're on the same. We have the same beliefs. And um, three, you just. It's easier that way. Three, it's easier, or well, maybe I said I said two things. <laughs> I said you're in the same, a different state, and um, two, we're on the same path. And so, um, and three, I stay busy. I get my sit to look, trying to do breaking it down with C. Jackson, coming here every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. is something. I love it, but it's something. And so, it keeps my mind occupied and so that's what i really want to get to now is you know those four years not four years four main things that help me stay together y'all so it's one i stay busy i mean i'm not saying you gotta go be busy every second of the day but you know out of mind is the devil's playground so you need to go find your hobby learn something new take some piano lessons i don't know you know go travel do something read i read a lot y'all so read um, and, and when you read, what you read, because another thing, that's the second thing I have to do. What pay attention to what I read and what I listen to, what I watch, all of this, because I'm listening to something where there's a lot of sexual content. Of course, that's what's going to be on my mind. So I don't, if I'm not planning to have sex, I can't be exposed to that. So that's another thing watching what I read and I said read it right <laughs> but read listen to and um, watch and then three have well three maintain positive relationships okay I can get involved with somebody who ain't believing what I'm believing or I can't be around friends that don't support what I'm doing you know that's what's that and then um uh oh I'm sorry and then just stay involved stay I said stay busy maintain positive relationships um, watch what you listen to, read or write. I said read or write. And then also positive thoughts. So y'all probably thinking, do you think, because people think, I'm so tired of this, y'all. Just because I'm not having sex does not mean I don't think about it. Or I don't have the urges to. Like, the, I'm still human. I was telling this lady who's doing the newsletter on, um, on me, like, even though I have not went that way, how, how do you know that it's going to, feel good or you know what the experience is like well the urge is still there because it's the way my body is made our bodies are made like i'm supposed to feel this way because <laughs> my body is made so just the thing is what am i going to do about it so positive thoughts so you if you don't know any positive thoughts you can't think on positive thoughts so that goes to the reading and listening to stuff that's going to promote positive thoughts, positive thinking that's not going to give me to keep thinking about sex. So when the, when that time comes, I um, I bring those those things, those values and beliefs back to my mind. And so um, that's kind of how, um, <laughs> that's kind of bet these people are like, what is, who is she talking to? What is she doing? But anyway, so that's, that's it. That's, that's how I wait, y'all. Is it easy all the time? No, it is not. It gets hard, but that's why I do those things. Like, if I didn't, if I didn't have breaking it down, suggested I'd probably be more involved. I used to be involved in church a lot. I was on the dance ministry at my church, so it's just it's a continual thing. I have to stay busy. That's how you just enjoy life. I mean, there's more to life than sex. And so, if y'all y'all know, I, I tell people all the time, I can go on and on and on, but 
feel free to ask questions, uh, comment, even if you're watching a replay, you can still comment and um, ask questions. And also, y'all, I was, I, I, one of my, for, two of my former students found my business page. It's, I, I'm glad they did, but at the same time, it's weird, but that's okay. Um, I don't know if they're watching tonight or not, or if they're watching later. I don't know, but I, I hope they do. So we'll see. But y'all got any questions for me? Something I did not answer uh, because that's what Queens and Wayne's about. Because that's that's me. And so you know we're gonna get into more detail at this luncheon coming up in July. And so boundaries. I gotta have boundaries uh, with the current boyfriend. You know, not sleeping in the same room. Uh, not just not putting ourselves in a situation. And I and I can tell y'all this. When you don't put yourself in the situation to have sex, um, <laughs> hey, Shamika, hey, good, keep going to do it. Thank you, I will. And so, um, you don't put yourself in no situation, it's, it's, it's like it's free, but when you get in the situation, you got to come out of it because you're about to get to it. That's not that is not an easy thing to do. I'm just here to tell you that's why many people fail because. It takes a lot of grit. You're going to hear me say this. Like, this has been my word for the season, grit. Next season, I might not have another word. But I'm going to be saying grit until I'm, I'm tired of saying it. And so you got to, do you have the grit to wait? I'm not saying you can't, but it takes, it takes, and you can't be like, oh, I'm going to do it for uh, a year and you ain't used to not having sex. So you got to take this thing maybe a minute at a time. Like, I don't know what your situation is. But, um... I just it just takes it just takes a lot but when you have when I do all these other things that I mentioned it's it makes it easier um, on me but it's always gonna be a challenge because that's that's just that's just life it's just gonna be challenging it's just you know just not even going there I promise it's so much easier not to even get to that point and have to come back it's like you take somebody child in a candy store but you're not gonna buy any candy I'm going to take it to the candy store or ice cream shop or toy store or whatever they like to go and you're not going to buy me nothing. Why you take me here? Like, I want to leave me in the car. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's my analogy, just my story for that. But, um, oh, also young. So I told you how I wait, but in the book, I, I got a chapter called Purity Club and I asked the, the girls, um, what helps them stay celibate? And so most of them say, you know, support from family and friends and not putting yourself in compromising situations. So just like I said, don't put yourself in a situation where you know you're going to be tempted to um, do that. But um, the book, that book is available on Amazon for $10. It's called Wait, Women, and Intimate Tales. But yeah, I asked them that question. Most of them said that same thing. Support from family and friends. And um, sometimes you're not, look, Sometimes you're not always going to get the support from family because especially as a, if you 30 some and you ain't never had sex or if you have sex and you walk in the cell now they're going to be looking at you real crazy sometimes. So <laughs> sometimes you're not even going to have is my book in store. No, my book is not in stores yet. Yeah, just wait on it. It's not in bookstore, not in storage yet, but it is on um, Amazon and Create Space. If you're familiar with Create Space, you can go on there and purchase it. But not a lot of people are familiar with that. But if I keep saying it in broadcast, people start learning what's Create Space. If because if you're not an author, you probably have no clue what Create Space is. And so, but it's a self-publishing platform that I use to publish um, the book. So um, of course, if you're in the um, Sometimes people, uh, I meet people, they want to buy the book. And I'm in Memphis and I meet people, they want to buy the book. And I have some on me. So, y'all, I'll be like, look, I look, I just want to say, y'all, uh, tomorrow I'm going to Dallas for the Mega Fest. T.D. Jakes, one of my favorite pastors. Yes, yes, yes. And I got the book, Women That Are Loose. It's so old. But I learned something about this book this year before I read it. And that's what made me buy it. Well, I was going to buy it anyway, but this is what really made me buy it. Um, he self-published this book. 
And this was his, well, this is his first book. He was saying he was selling out of his trunk. I said, he sound like me. So if I'm selling out my trunk and I sell publishing, I'm going to, look, I'm going to blow up like T.D. Jakes. But, uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm going mega fast T.D. Jakes. Yeah, I know, right? I'm, um, y'all, I know I share some stuff with y'all on here, but y'all just don't have any. There's so much going on in the background. I'm writing a book on that too, but it's a lot going on. Um, but anyway, back to TD Jakes. I'm going to the Women That I Lose conference um, this week. Yeah, me too. Should be, I, yeah, I'm like I saw him when he came in May. Did you see him? Well, I don't know. You probably I don't know if you did, but I saw him when he came to Memphis uh, last month, and it was it was awesome. And so, um, but I'm going down there. And I'm just excited. And speaking of going to Dallas, starting tomorrow and sometime up until probably July 1st or next week, I don't really know just yet. I'm not going to be, this is my plan, y'all. I'm not going to be thinking about breaking it down with C. Jackson. I'm not going to be posting about, I'm not going to be on social media. I'm going to take, I'm going to be in vacation mode because brain is going, 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 going. Y'all just don't know, going, going, going. So all I really plan to do is one, I'm almost done with this book. I'm done with it tonight. And then I'm going to be reading, soaking stuff in, learning, and just enjoying myself, relaxing. And I I'm not, I, I'm, I think I'm just going to post this surprise gift that somebody's going to donate to the girls in the swag bag. And that's going to be it until for a couple of days. I'm straight. I'm going to put an announcement on there. Like, y'all, look. You know how you uh, email... Like somebody, you email somebody and they send a vacation email back that I want to do that. Like, y'all, I ain't got there yet. I'm just saying, like, that's, I still get emails. Like, I got a lot of emails. I'm working with a lady to do a newsletter. She did a newsletter, a news story on me. So she was emailing me. Not to say I don't want her to, but I was thinking, you know, I do have people that do email. It's so, um, maybe I should do that because I won't even want to, you know, I want to be, I just want my mind focused on the, the festival and not trying to return an email because if I see the email, I'm going to read it and I'm going to reply to it as this, you know. But anyway, so I'm definitely going to, I'm shutting down the social media for a couple of days. And um, I don't want to talk about breaking it down with CJ unless somebody talk to me about it. Then, of course, y'all, I am bring I am bringing books to Dallas. I'm, I'm going to Dallas with books. I, I don't go, no, I don't, I don't, you know how I say don't leave home without it. I don't leave home without them books. And so, <laughs> you just don't know. I mean, you, you don't know what's going to happen. Who may need a book? But I don't plan to do any kind of like posting and thinking about, you know, breaking it down like that, but try to mostly relax. But I ain't going to talk here all day long, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, I think that's all I cover. I already talked about the sponsor, and I, you know what? I just can't believe the sponsor that I'm getting, they came out of nowhere. And so, um,. I can't wait to tell you about this sponsor. What I, I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm trying to hold it in, y'all. But it's just amazing. I didn't even know it's a small world. But follow me on, on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Share the video if you uh, would like to. And if you want to um, be in Memphis or if you want to come to the Queens and Wayne event, there's still tickets available for girls ages 13 to 17. Uh oh, y'all. I was so. That phone, the connection is about to go, so that means I probably need to go before I say something really important and have to start this thing over. So I will see. Next week is the 4th of July, so I know I'm not broadcasting on the 4th of July. I don't even know. I know I'm going to broadcast something next week, but I don't know what day. So, because the last day to register for the event is July 8th. And so I got to get on here before then, but definitely not the 4th of July. But I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to, I got to pack. <laughs> That's what I got to do. And so, and some other little things, time is running out. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.